Morning friends. Today at Small House, we are gonna be planting beans in our three sisters garden. Here's our little three sisters garden patch that we got going on. And today we're gonna be planting the third sister, the beans. Now it is a beautiful day for getting out in the garden. We're out here nice and early in the morning. As you can tell, um, the chickens here are really excited to start the day as well. All right, so now the Three Sisters Garden, what this is, is it's kind of a synergistic relationship between three plants, uh, which is an indigenous tradition, a way of growing that has been done here on this land for thousands of years. The Three Sisters are the corn, the squash, and then the beans. And the way that they grow together is just, it's like they were meant to be together. I really believe that they are. Now the corn is gonna grow here on these mounds and um, they're gonna grow obviously a nice tall corn stalk. Um, then the beans that we're gonna plant are then gonna climb this stalk and use the plant as support. Uh, what's cool about that is that the corn, being a grass, poaceae, is a heavy nitrogen feeder and the beans are actually nitrogen fixers, putting nitrogen into the soil to feed the plants. So that's a cool relationship. And then when we incorporate the squash, here's a nice example right here of the squash. Now these guys are gonna grow all around throughout the mounds and they're gonna create a nice ground cover which is going to suppress the weeds, it's gonna retain the moisture and it's gonna keep the raccoons out of our corn when it's harvest time. So that's, that's a really nice relationship, really cool to do. Now you can see the model that we've got here with the mounds. This is something that we, we've kind of uh, adopted from the book Buffalo Bird Woman's Garden which is an incredible book that I highly recommend. I'll put a link down in the uh, description below so you can check out the book yourself if you're interested in buying it. Buffalo Bird Woman was a Hadassah native. She was born in 1839. And the book Buffalo Bird Woman's Garden first came out in 1917. Uh, it's told all in her own words. And I mean, not only is it just an inspirational book, that I highly recommend to everybody, but it is chock full of handy tips and tricks uh, that any gardener would benefit from. One of the benefits of the mounds that we have here, you know, there's a few of them, is the mounds themselves actually make a nice support for the roots of the corn. Um, as the corn grows, it's really easy to hill it back up to give it that support so they don't get uh, blown over in the wind later in the season. Um, also, it makes it very easy to weed. Right? You can tell where uh, the plants are that you want to keep and the plants are that you don't want to keep. Um, and if you've looked around, you notice it's about time to do some weeding around here. So we're going to have to get the kids out on that soon. All right, now you can see the corn here. We planted this corn two weeks ago during the full moon. Um, and, and she has just grown wonderfully. She's been very, very happy here. And we plant our corn and we let it wait till it's about this tall, you know, anywhere between eight to 12 inches before we plant our beans. Now the reason for this is if we plant it too soon, when the plant's too small, um, the beans are gonna quickly overtake that and pull the plant down. So now that the, the corn's pretty well established, we'll be able to get our beans into the ground and the, the corn's gonna make a nice, a nice support for our bean plants. Um, now typically, uh, traditionally, we would also plant the squash around the same time. But the variety of squash that we're growing is uh, it's, a, it's a longer season squash. It's actually the Seminole pumpkin from down in Florida. So we started our squash plants early to make sure that they'd have time to ripen up to get some mature fruits by winter time. As you can see here, the really beautiful Seminole pumpkin. It's a, it's a type of moshata squash, similar to a butternut. Um, we saved some seeds from these squash actually in an earlier video. I'll put a link to that as well so you can check that out. And those are actually the seeds that we planted here that you can see. Now our corn, um, I'm so excited about this corn. This is a Bear Island Chippewa Flint corn, um, which is a traditional corn actually grown by the indigenous folks right here on this land that we're standing. Um, so this is just a really, really neat thing to be able to plant this corn here. And it obviously loves it. It's doing really, really well. Now since it's a Flint corn, that means that we're going to be able to uh, nixtamalize it, we're going to be able to make hominy with it, uh, we could grind it into cornmeal to make cornbread and that sort of thing. It's going to be really, really useful and absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful seeds as well. Now we've got two varieties of beans that we're going to be planting today um, and they're both what's called a half runner. Um, now some, some bean varieties will grow as a bush habit, um, which is just a, a tall erect uh, and a bush stature and some are poles, aggressive pole beans that are going to grow, uh, I've had some that grow 12, 14 foot. Um, now this is a half runner, this is kind of in between those. So it's going to be a nice uh, vining plant, so it's going to climb up our corn, but it's not going to be too aggressive and pull it down, uh, the half runner type. This particular variety here is known as the Anakin Cavilli Giant. Look at the size of these seeds too. Real big and meaty. Now I like this bean because it's dual purpose. I can eat it when it's young as a green bean and enjoy it that way, or I can let it mature and have these dried beans to use in the winter time um, for, for soups or, or whatever, baked beans. 
um, a number of different dishes. So it's a very versatile bean. And since we're working with limited space here, um, I just kind of stack my functions in a way and get as much out of my food as I can. The other variety that we're gonna grow is a smaller seed. Real pretty one though too. Um, now this is called Ugandan Bantu. Uh, it's another half runner. This is actually from Africa, um, Ugandan bean. Um, real pretty too. And again, a nice dual purpose bean. Now you can tell that my seeds are wet. We actually soaked our beans overnight. Uh, what this does is it allows the seed to absorb a bunch of moisture um, before planting, which kind of speeds up germination and uh, gets these guys a good head start, right? All right, now let's plant our Anakin beans. These are a real special one too, you know. Um, they're named after our youngest son, Anakin. Our friend Joe brought these back from uh, the Republic of Georgia, the village of Cavilli actually, so that's how they have their name, Anakin Cavilli. Uh, that's a real fun story. It's actually in my first book. We tell that story uh, from our seeds and their keepers um, Amongst a bunch of other good stories too, right? So I'll put that link down uh, in the description too So you can check out that book if you're interested now the rule of thumb When you're planting seeds is you want to plant your seed at a depth That's approximately one and a half times the width of the seed, right? Uh, one and a half times the width of the seed so you can see this is a larger seed So we're gonna put it in a slightly bigger hole if you're planting a small patch like this, this is a quick, easy thing to do by hand. You simply just make your hole, drop in the seed, cover it up. About an inch and a half into the ground right there is where that one's about at. Um, if you're working larger scale or if you've got a helper, you can come along with a stick or a dibble is what it's called and poke the holes and they'll follow behind you and drop the seeds in. A little bit more efficient, um, but I like the hands-on approach. I like to have this relationship uh, with the corn and the beans, so I like to do it all by hand. All right, now as you can see here, um, I'm planting the beans on the southern side of the hill. I'm not putting one bean for every corn. I'm just putting a few on the southern side of the hill. In my experience, what I find is that the, the beans on the southern side of the hill are going to be exposed to more sun, obviously, and they're going to grow better. The, uh, on, the, on the northern side of the hill, they get a little more, tend to be shaded out, and um, they're going to be a little lanky and stuff. Longer vines, less beans. So this way we get some good, vigorous plants. That's not going to overwhelm our corn. Now the most important thing in any garden is to have fun, right? There's really no hard and fast rules to how we're going to do this. Uh, I have seen Three Sisters Garden um, include sunflowers, which makes a great pole for a bean to climb. Um, instead of squash, I've seen melons used, um, cow peas instead of the traditional bean. Um, you know, it, it's really flexible. So whatever's going to work best for your area, uh, what kind of food your family likes to eat, whatever it is that you're interested in, you, you can kind of uh, customize this and make it your own. Actually, everything here seems to be in odd numbers. Uh, we've got 49 hills. Um, each hill's got seven corn planted into it. Uh, the squash is every three hills, and then we're planting three bees at each one. Um, no particular reason other than that. I'm just trying to have some fun, right? All right, so we got all our beans planted here in our Three Sisters garden, and I bet they're gonna be up and growing within the week. So if you wanna stay up to date on how everything's growing around here, follow us on our Facebook or our Instagram, and make sure you subscribe down below.